Good evening, and welcome to the Ames courtroom of Austin Hall at Harvard Law School and tonight's discussion on communication and human development, the Freedom Connection. Uh, to my immediate left, Amartya Sen was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 1999. He is the Lamont University Professor and Professor of Economics and Philosophy here at Harvard University. To his left, Michael Spence was awarded the Nobel Prize in Economics in 2001. He is a senior fellow at the Hoover Institution and the Philip H. Knight Professor Emeritus of Management in the Graduate School of Business at Stanford University, Clotilde Fonseca, founding director of the Costa Rican Program of Educational Informatics created in 1988 in Costa Rica by the Omar Dengo Foundation and the Ministry of Public Education. And finally, to her left, Yokai Benkler is the Berkman Professor of Entrepreneurial Legal Studies at Harvard and faculty co-director of the Berkman Center for Internet and Society, as well as the organization of the infrastructure such as wireless communications. Benkler's book, The Wealth of Net Networks, examines the way in which, oh, I'm sorry, this is awkward. <laughs> um, I really, Professor Sen, I'm sorry, I really should take this. Hello? Yes? Mother, I told you I'm on a panel tonight. I really should not be talking on the phone. It's, it's completely, no, I, I, I have to go. Mom, mom, let, let me go. Okay, good. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. <laughs> this technology is liberation. This is tyranny. It's an imposition, it's an interruption. Why do we celebrate the mobile phone as an instrument for human development in the global south? We hear about the explosion of mobile phones in Africa, in Latin America. The UN now tells us that half of the planet are connected to the mobile network. Discussants, for our, for my first question to you, please. Has the mobile phone solved the problems of ICT for development by providing essentially access to everyone? Are we done and can we now go home? Do we not need to have another one of these programs? Or does this appliance and the wireless network that connects to it create more development policy or design challenges than it solves? And please, Professor Sen, if I can first direct this general set of questions to you, and if we could start with you. Do you believe the specifics of the mobile phone expand real substantive freedoms that people enjoy. And I, I have to start the fielding. Um, well, I think there's no question that it does do that. I mean, that seems to me to be fairly straightforward. Um, it um, clearly adds to your mother's freedom to call you at this moment. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think the um, I think the, the really interesting question is that. Anyone who is involved in kind of freedom-based studies, and a lot of people are in in um, in, uh, in contemporary political and moral philosophy as well as economics, sometimes supported by IDRC, as it happens, <laughs> um, know that one of the downsides of um, expansion of freedom is that it might reduce the freedom of somebody else at the same time. It comes up very strongly in the context, for example, of gender studies, when you say that, you know, that this will increase the power of people to do things. Um, if, you know, you might say that an enhancement, better nutrition makes you, I would just take the most crudest example, better nutrition makes you physically more able to do things. Now, in a society in which nutrition may not be very fairly divided and where there is, in any case, an asymmetry between men and women, there's a question, maybe could it have a more negative impact on domestic violence in making people more empowered to take action, which they, in a debilitated state of undernourishment, would not have been able to take. I think, so you would not, I think, find a case where there is no counter uh, factor involved. The main thing are two, I think. First of all, there will be complicated cases where we have to look at that and see what, how, how does it uh, come out. But the secondly, there will be in general a presumption in some direction. Just as that better nutrition, we have a presumption, is a good thing, 
even though we recognize that there are issues, sometimes even pathological issues connected with it. And I think the mobile phone story is the same. I think it's basically an expansion of freedom. But we can think of some complicated cases when it, it sort of makes life difficult. I can't say how much I enjoy. Uh, I mean, despite my dislike of having long distance flights, I'm absolutely delighted that no one can call me during that journey. <laughs> Though I gather that that freedom is very short-lived. They're all coming. And any moment now, the stewardess will call me to, uh, to pick up my phone and take a message <laughs> from the Harvard Economics Department to do something <laughs> and join a committee or something. <laughs> so so um, I think that's the way I would answer. Yes, basically, yes. That doesn't mean that there are no complexities involved in it. But there is no such issue in the world which doesn't involve such complexity. So yes, but. Uh, yeah. To you, Professor Spence. I would say yes, yes, and but. Yes, yes, and but.